Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast, all the things we did not get to during the course of the show today. Uh, yesterday, we didn't have a full-blown aftercast. We actually did a Facebook Live, which is still up at Facebook. Just search Wally Show, and uh, you can check it out there. We were kind of doing some slideshows of my trip to Disney, and uh, we were talking about, like, I-, I told my daughter, I said, be prepared to be spoiled. And she's like, oh boy, Vacation Dad is here. And I, uh, so I spoiled her, you know, and like, I haven't seen her like in eight months. So it was fun. But my wife did not not see the Facebook live. Mm-hmm. Uh, we apologize. We had messages go out alerting people, but they got late. They got to people late. And so my wife didn't know we had done it. And so I was telling her about the thing and then updating her on what the total was that I had spent on Haley. And even she was like, what? Like it, 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 it snuck up on us, you know? Mm. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's true. Actually. I, 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 I don't need to buy her love. Does, well, of course not. Does it kind of concern you though, that Marty didn't know or was kind of shocked by it because I thought she was the one that was supposed to be tracking your spending and mm. if she's not then who is because yeah. you don't yeah 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 yeah. like I don't know how much money we have in the bank um, I just don't I, well, I don't look at it I don't less she, after this weekend is <laughs> yeah. she keeping track of yeah, that yeah I think so <laughs> 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 apparently she was on vacation too huh. uh, yeah no like uh, it, it uh, like Nate Bargatze has this great thing about uh, this bit about not knowing what he has and I don't think people understand that or could fathom that but I truly don't know how much money I have in the bank now I know our investments because I handle that stuff with our with our uh, broker and stuff so mm-hmm. I know what that is although that I right now I, I look every maybe every quarter because everything's so bad mm. I it stresses me out that's why I don't know that's why I don't ask um, and so I listen for cues from my wife like if my wife is ever like oh let's eat at home today oh wait what's wrong you know like, <laughs> what happened you know let's have ramen for the third night yeah, exactly like, like if, if I spend too much I don't know <laughs> uh, but yeah I don't want to know because I get stressed uh, so if you are going to buy something big yeah like an e-foil thing, oh yeah 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 would you need to pass it by her first just Absolutely. to make sure that you have the money? I would even if I knew how much it was, like a big purchase, I always discuss with her, you mm-hmm. know, going into it. And like we bought her car, you know, and mm-hmm. so uh, we discuss all of those things. For things that are like, I typically, if it if it's under $100, like I probably don't say anything or, oh, I got this. I ordered this off mm-hmm. Amazon or, you know, something today. But something that's like, say it's a new tool uh, and it, say it was like a $250 tool, mm-hmm. I would usually tell her, yeah, I'm thinking about getting this. And then she's always like, oh, yeah, you're fine. No, no, no big deal. Uh, like she never tells me, oh, don't do something. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, out of respect and courtesy, like I tend to let her know. And she does the same thing for me. Like she very rarely buys anything for herself either. Um, although she has turned into a sneakerhead. This is what's really weird. She, like, you know how they have the sneaker culture? Mm-hmm. She's not into the culture like, oh, I got to get the new Jordans, but she's found that she really likes buying sneakers. And like she's buying sneakers like a beast. Yeah. Maybe you should. Look at her spending. I, maybe and we then should base it off of that. Yeah. Like if she's spending money, then then we're good. Yeah, uh, yeah, because she never spends money. So Do you money. still have more shoes than she does, though. Uh, or is I, she catching up to you? I, I, she, I think she's catching up to me with the new sneakers and stuff. Because I gave away a bunch of mine too. Like I kind of reset my shoe game, uh, and I gave away mine. So, hmm. but anywho, uh, hey. You know, speaking of like earning a living, you see all these places that can't hire anybody and we're sorry we're closed because we can't get people to work. You know, that drives me crazy uh, when there's so many jobs out there. Well, um, with all the talks of jobs not being filled, I was surprised to hear that when the FAA opened up 1,500 jobs for air traffic controllers, 57,000 people applied. Whoa, 57,000 applied for 1,500 jobs. Whoa. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's a lot. And the airlines have been blaming the FAA and air traffic controllers for the shortage, and the FAA has responded with, nuh uh, <laughs> it's not our problem. How professional. Yeah, it was like you guys messing this up, uh, but they're hiring to get back to pre pandemic levels. And uh, they say that the job is super stressful, but uh, this might be the reason that people are going to apply for it, like at 57000 How much do you think the average price for that person that sits up in the tower? And is like Charlie Foxtrot Alpha. You are clear on runway two seven. Have a good flight, sir. <laughs> Boy, I want to do it. Yeah. I, I think it, it's a very important job. Yeah, because yeah, you're you basically be keeping game. planes 
Oh yeah, from not yeah. from crashing. Charlie Echo One Two Four, uh, you are <laughs> on uh, runway four five, and I want you to hold short. That's what they say. They don't say stop for some reason, hold so short. people don't freak out and stop their plane. They say hold short. Hit the brake four please. four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're so calm. <laughs> That'd be clutch. And then they're like, hit the clutch? No! no. <laughs> How do you think they order at drive throughs I'll take a yeah, um, yeah. Number two. double uh, with a large... But hold coke. short on the ice. I know? think if I had that job, I would just do it with different like uh, uh, impressions love, of people. I would love uh, it. Yeah, like Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. or something. I need you to get on the chopper. Yeah, get on the chopper. <laughs> you have a chopper <laughs> crossing in front of you. And then they'd have, to, they'd have to guess who I was trying to impersonate. That's great. Or I'd just do it as Southern. We'd be great. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Echo Charlie Foxtrot. Hey, <laughs> you, uh, why don't you just take that Airbus 18 wheeler and, uh, <laughs> you know, get that thing on over there right now. Look at his flick. And when you get back, we'll split some onion rings over there at the Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Onion. The way you hear so me Brett in your Walker. head is Yeah, it is how I hear you. Uh, um, so you I think? would say that they make 67000 a year. Okay, that's a good guess, Gavin. I'm thinking they're pretty well off in the 85000 range. Okay. Mm. Each of you have uh, given a really good salary for someone that does a very important job, but you are both low. Oof. Are we talking six figures? Yeah. The mm. average no. median salary for air traffic controllers is $138,000. <gasps> Guys, I'm giving my two weeks. I know. <laughs> and, and I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't blame you a bit. Holy cow. How do you get there? Like, yeah. I wonder what you have Hi, to have boys, done. Hi, boys. It's me, Betty Rock. Oh, sorry. That was sexist. I mean, ladies, you can be pilots, too, and I just love you all. We're going to fly today. Oh, my God. <laughs> That'd be a shoe in. I could see. I could it. do sh- share. Yeah. Hi guys. No, that's not good. I don't <laughs> could you do share? Could you? Could you really? Uh, I can only like do it when share? I say, "Do you believe in life after You have to sing everything. <laughs> could you learn this plane <laughs> <laughs> on runway four four? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, one hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars. Turn back time. <laughs> if I could turn, turn back, back planes. <laughs> They're landing. Like, why do we have to come to this airport? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. It's a ton of money. They say it's a really super stressful job that for a long time it was one of the highest uh, suicide rates oh, uh, wow. profession so yeah apply rock <laughs> oh my gosh that's horrible that was so dark that was very dark I'm Jeez. sorry <laughs> Wow! <laughs> yeah, I mean it's weird. I, 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 and I don't know why. I guess there was it was very uh, stressful. I don't know. Huh. Uh, okay, I got. I'm, I, I'm just baffled and fascinated by this. Um, I saw this headline. Okay. Vince Gill, you know, he uh, Love Vince Gill. married to Amy Grant. Yes. Okay, headline. He's also yeah. great in country world. Okay, but listen to this headline. Vince Gill pays tribute to wife Amy Grant after injured in an accident. It sounds like she died. Which like, she, yeah. I assume, did not. She did not. No, no she, she fell off her scrapes, bike. Oh. Scrapes and bruises. This is getting but, ridiculous. But she had a heart trans, not a heart transplant, but she had heart surgery. surgery. Yeah. yeah, but that has nothing to do with this. Like, she literally fell off her bike and got scrapes and bruises, went to the hospital and was released, like, went home. And now he's doing, like, a, a like the, the headline is just crazy. On CNN, pays tribute to On wife CNN. Amy Grant. Uh, he sang a song for it. He was doing a residency at the Opry, and uh-huh. I guess he sang uh, his song and had and had their daughters uh, sing so a song about her. So he might have just done it, just yeah. not at, to pay tribute. Maybe right. that's the wrong verb. That's my point. But instead, just to, because he loves her. Yeah, honors his wife, you know, or whatever. But they've made a thing out of like, I fall off my bike all the time. I know. You know? And it sounds like this is coming, this complaint is coming from a hurt place. Because no one cares. <laughs> no one pays tribute to me when I fall if off anything, my bike. point and laugh. Yeah, my buddy's <laughs> over there laughing, going, I got that on tape. Uh, you know, but yeah. And so I just, I, it's just been a weird story. She did have a concussion. Now, concussions can be serious. Yeah, that's pretty big. I, you know, I don't know, but I've, I mean, I've had a bunch of concussions in my life. Well, look what they did tell. to you. I know. <laughs> um, it was interesting, though, on the serious side of concussions, I don't know how bad hers was, but I mean, they just really feel like they've overblown this story. Um, but we had a friend that their son, uh, nice kid, like just normal, nice kid, 
playing sports, gets a bad concussion, and it altered him. He became angry, enraged, violent, and it's mm-hmm. like and and so they started doing more and more studies on concussions. If you look at the NFL, yep. the concussion um, protocol is like something they take very seriously now because mm-hmm. guys were getting hurt and messed up. And I've seen this happen, and I've seen this when you see someone talk about it. More and more people are telling stories of like their kids getting concussions in sports and it altering their behavior. And a lot of times it goes super dark and violent. Mm, and yeah. it's crazy to That's think that scary. that could happen. I think that someday, should I have a boy or a girl when it comes to sports, I could assume that the boy would be the one who would choose football. Right. And I think that hey, my wife and I have had that discussion of like, okay, he'll get to that point. And I think I'd be a little bit nervous about him saying, I want to play football. Yeah. Odds are he's going to be a small little guy. So hopefully I can stir him away from that. Based or he on, won't get to play. Yeah, that was my story. <laughs> maybe. Same. <laughs> but um, they always, it was weird. They were, for a long time, they were claiming that other athletes like soccer players got concussions just as much the head as all and that. Stuff, yeah. They Heading. say that. I played for 15 years. My yeah. head like never hurt per se, but I played football for one year and I remember falling down and cracking my neck on the back of the on the field and I <laughs> was hurt. I remember uh, just having I looked like a bobblehead yeah. cuz my football helmet never fit. <laughs> like it would flop back and forth on my head cuz I was so small and I'm wearing all these big pads and so my helmet's when I'm running is going up and down. <laughs> like I just I, anytime I got hit it hurt because all my gear didn't fit and it was just like pow pow and it killed me. It's a violent game. Yeah. I don't yeah, I don't boy if I had a son, I would still probably, you know, let him play football. I, think so. I mean, I, I I think there's part of it that's learned. You hear the horror stories of people that unfortunately get paralyzed playing football, but I mean, at the end of the day, it could happen playing soccer. It could happen on a bus, you know, and and so you can't bubble wrap the kids. No. That's the tough part about parenting is, you know, you you kind of just when you're in it, you're in it, and you see what they're passions are and you try to foster that but then you balance that with your fear like I could not could not have a daughter in gymnastics on the balance beam Oof. I oh, could yeah. so I could scary. I could have her doing the uneven bars and I could have her doing the vault but I'd be like you're not doing balance beam there's no I the cannot vault? watch that I, where the they vault. throw themselves off of the thing and are spinning in midair yeah that one's kind of cool the one that Simone Biles <laughs> said she had the the Twisties. twisties for yeah him. yeah that one's kind of cool the though. twisties yeah that's yeah. what she said dizziness or something uh it's where their head isn't focusing right and they and they can't get Sounds their landing serious. so that yeah so that was that was the big part of her pulling out of the olympics was she was talking about she felt she had the twisties and where they're not focused and then that's where they can get like super hurt because they're not able to spot their landing and things mm-hmm. like that so it it sounds like something you would call it in women's gymnastics, though. Twist. You got the twisties? I sure do. You know, like, <laughs> like not crazy. Yeah, it's not very technical, but it, you know, it gets the point across, I guess. So, anyway, uh, Amy Grant on the mend and <laughs> tributes being paid. We should go to a, a can a, a can a vigil a candlelight vigil, like at her house. Just put a Stop. bunch of candles all around okay? her front door. <laughs> oh, my oh my gosh, that would be so funny. Oh, okay. And I guess that's it for me. What do you got, Rock? Serena Williams, she announced recently that she is retiring from tennis. But I mean, like she's slowly, you know, yeah. backing out of things. Mainly it's due to the fact that she said she's 41 and her mm-hmm. daughter wants a sibling. And she is going to have to retire so that she can provide that sibling. Um, she's, really? That's an interesting deal. Yeah. Well, she said if she were um, a male athlete, she wouldn't have to. Like he could still get out there and play. What? But her, she can't. Well, she and especially at forty one, you yeah. do have to take care of yourself. It took her time to, to have a baby. Took her time to get back after the the first one. Per I mean, se. you you have the physical part of yes, you are carrying a baby, and yes, like as a male, you would not have to have the nine months of carrying a baby, so you could keep working. But to say that, like, oh. This is going to end my career, and I can't because I can't still uh, compete because I have children. I think that's doing a disservice to women all over because you've got the money to hire people to watch your kids for you while you're you know doing stuff. You could if you still wanted to. I, that's a cop out to me. You know if you didn't if you if you were say hey. 
Uh, I'm I am gonna focus on my family now, and this is important to me. And I'm tennis is not as important to me, or I love it, but this is what I'm gonna let take my time. Great, have at it. But it's like you're blaming your kid, like oh they want a, a sibling, so I have to quit because I'm not a man. That's garbage. Well, I mean the, the way that she put it, she said that, but I mean, could this be a form of her like? Taking care of her family, expanding her family. Doesn't sound, but the way it's put doesn't sound like that. The way it's put sounds like I would, uh, like, I can't compete because I'm not a man and it's weakening women, you know, honestly. Like, I, women, women have babies, they run marathons and they're amazing and they do what guys can't do because none of us would choose to have a baby. Uh, like, no, absolutely not. And then, you know, to say, well, I can't, you know, why couldn't she come back and play? Her age is getting up to where it's harder to play play at that mm-hmm. level mm-hmm. that's just yeah. an age thing man that is not a gender thing like she's it, facing 20 year olds that yeah are, yeah you know, I, have that, 20 less years on their legs I, yeah i don't care how great you are but, i mean she's one of the greatest of all times but there's a, a point in time where it's 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 age that's gonna get you you know yeah. you can in go her, out and try play in doubles her, in her defense she is like the greatest probably female athlete of all time and like does not have more to prove per se right so i feel like she's good with this role in like stepping away from it but yeah if it's like you go well two things i i think that when it comes to women being moms you're quickly judged if you're not there 24 7 because men can go out and do what they want do the job that they need and they're not going to be judged saying well you weren't there to tuck them in at night or Mm. you weren't there to feed them sure where the same the same would not be said for women women if you're not there with your kid 24 7 they're going to be like "Uh, you're not that great but who's judging them other moms other women and that's the problem guys aren't judging you guys are like good go for it but but where women judge each other you guys are doing your own gender a disservice you guys agree you guys are putting yourself in the kitchen, so to speak, metaphorically, with that old stereotype, and you should be celebrating each other, like that are uh, you know going out and working and and still being you I know, agree. in the field you want to be in, even if you have kids. I agree. Um, another thing, she has enough money, I would assume, oh, yeah. that oh, yeah. she could get um, what Kim Kardashian did, get a, a surrogate. surrogate. Oh yeah, yeah. and but I know that. I mean, I'm not a mom, but um, watching. <laughs> Keeping up with the Kardashians, um, I know that Kim battled with. Wow. She she labored. She carried her two yeah. first children, yeah. and then her last two she used a surrogate for. And she worried that she wouldn't have that bond with those children like she did her first two children. That's of course that didn't prove to be anything. Like she loves all her children equally, but that could be something that Serena is worried about well, and so yeah. she's not getting um a surrogate, a surrogate. right but she could i was res- no i respect that i i just i just think that she and again money doesn't solve everything but if you're trying to be uh if you are in the limelight and you're a person that has like a demanding schedule like take a ceo you know a woman ceo they have assistants that help them do everything that they need to get done that mm-hmm. they don't have time for and you don't want to like shelve off the raising of your children to anybody you know like mm-hmm. so you can't you can't do that as a mom or a dad but to have the money to have people help you so that when you are traveling you can focus on this part of your job and then you can step off the court and be a mom you mm-hmm. know cuz Dads have to step out of work and still be a dad. Yeah. You know, I think there's a stereotype that's like, oh, dads just aren't even there. Dads don't do anything. Dads are totally like, I was always there for my kid. I worked and I worked hard, but I came home and I was present in my kid's life. Yeah, and but, I still am. But I think you would admit that most of the time it's that's not the case. I, well, even in, even in admitting that I'm a good dad, I do admit that the lion's share of the raising of our daughter the day in day out was definitely on my wife because my wife we set it up so she didn't have to work that was our Mm -hmm. choice and so as a result this is your job you know like Mm -hmm. this is a big part you're going to be there with her throughout the day while i'm working Mm -hmm. if my wife had wanted to work and my wife had like the better successful career than me I could have stayed home. I would have done it in a heartbeat. Are you kidding me? Like, I'm like, great. Especially the older I've gotten. Maybe younger me wouldn't have because I thought I had to be the provider. But now, go back to work, honey, please. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, what do you got for birthdays? Well, we don't have any birthdays. Oh, well, that was so easy. Yeah. But we can answer a question. And this one August is... always seems like it's light on birthdays. I think I think people have kindly just stopped submitting them so we could just celebrate me. So thank you. <laughs> you think they care? Like, yeah. I, I think they care that much. Hmm. The potties are good people. <laughs> like They're like, I'm going to take one for the team. I really would love to have my birthday mentioned, but it is Wally's month. So... Oh. That's what well, they're thinking. Going off that note, or going on that note, uh, this one is a question just for you, Wally. Oh, good. It's from Katie Mel. She said, What is one cool thing that was given to you from Radio Disney? Oh, oh. Mm, money. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It was such Amen. A, it was, I cannot tell you how much money that job paid. It was so good. <laughs> so good. Uh, so that was good. No, uh, like I, I think some of it was the the kids' lives that we got to speak into and learning about some of these kids later in life and seeing where they are. Like Mark from Irvine listens now and still calls uh, this radio show, you know, and then to see him as a believer and married is kind of cool. And um, there were other kids uh, that um, Billy wanted to get into radio. That was We nicknamed everybody. So hmm. I think that is is cool. I got all kind of little tchotchkes and I got to do different cool events and stuff like that. That was neat. Um, but I think that would be the coolest takeaway I got. Cause Katie Mel, she's a huge, uh, uh, like Disney radio, Disney fan. And she sent me, she sent me a present actually, um, uh, this year I still have to email her back. Uh, but thank you, Katie. I'll tell you now, thank you for the present. I was on vacation when it came in. So I got it. I opened it up. There's like this, she always does really thoughtful gifts and, and personalized stuff. And it was really, nice and she wrote this cartoon book thing and so it's, it's cool so thank you katie you're the best um and so yeah so i okay katie you, you'll get what you, you you want katie mel is the best thing from radio disney there you go so is that what she wanted to hear yeah i think so no <laughs> <laughs> no i appreciate you and uh, i think that's gonna do it for our after as always thanks for being a potty